يا رحمة للعالمين يا شفيع المذنبين يا غاية الغمام يا مصباح الظلام يا قمر التمام صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله another day another opportunity may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to use every favor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us to use it in his way in his pleasure inshallah madad ya rijal Allah a'inuna bi'awn Allah wa kunu a'wnan lana billah asa nahda bi fadlillah inshallah today I want to continue with uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad we want to continue with Aqidatul Awam li Shaykh Ahmed al-Marzuqi we uh, stopped at the end of Ramadan I think it's been a couple of weeks uh, but we have a few more sessions Inshallah, we will use this opportunity for uh, Khatam to go over uh, the basic important aqidah that every Muslim must know. These are basic understandings. Uh, every mukallaf, every responsible Muslim must understand these things about his Lord, about prophets, about the unseen world. Uh, and if you are interested, you can go back on our YouTube channel and see the previous sessions, inshallah. Uh, Muhammad. We reached to the chapter 6 of the book of Mawlana uh, Shaykh Muhammad bin Alawi al-Maliki on his commentary on Aqidat Imam al-Marzuqi, Aqidat al-Awam, on the belief for of commoners, people like us, and we're not scholars, but every basic, this is basic understanding of Aqidah, must know understanding. You're, you, you're in trouble, we're in trouble if we are a responsible Muslim and we we're confused about some of these matters. 13 attributes of prof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfect attributes if you if you negate any of those attributes it means that your lord there's a deficiency and Allah is munazza an naqais Allah cannot have a deficiency so you must know these 13 attributes and then we have four attributes of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that are obligatory every every prophet must have these attributes Otherwise, he cannot be a prophet. You must believe in those. And one of them is impossible in their right. It's, 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 uh, ja'iz means it is possible in their right. It could be, it could not be, it's okay. And so we went over those as well. We also started to talk about the unseen. Uh, we started to talk about the, we, we, the 25 names of the prophet that's prophets that every Muslim must know. They are mentioned in the Holy Quran. So you must know that these are prophets and you must accept them as prophets, honor them as prophets. So awesome. You cannot deny if somebody says to you a name, you say, No, I don't I don't think he's a prophet, you'd be in trouble. You must know these prophets. And then we we also part of the series was to know the angels, ten angels that every Muslim must know about because they're mentioned in the seerah in the hadith or and sometimes in the holy quran you must know them and then the final the the this chapter talks about allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad al yawm al akhir belief in the last day all of us must believe that there is a judgment day coming there is a last day that we're all facing one day, we will leave this world and not as some, as Mawlana Sheikh Nazim used to say, square-headed people believe that you turn off the light and you go, once you die, you die, nothing happens after. No, we are Muslims. We believe there's continuity to our existence, just as we were in a different form before we came into this world. We were, soul, we were in the world of souls, before that we were in the world of dhar, in each, in each dominion, in each dimension, we have a form. In this world, we have this form. In the next world, we have another form. 
everybody inshallah we all go to heaven will be 33 years of age and we will we we'll have a green complexion and mustache see <laughs> that's just for, for our minds to <laughs> to <laughs> to yani anything to when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the things that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions is taqrib is just for our minds to to have something a reference but no one can imagine prophet sallallahu used to say ma la aynun ra'at wa la udhunun sam'at wa la khatara ala qalbi bashar that 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 realm it's what no ear has heard what no eye has seen no 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 imagination has imagined it cannot be so it's just for taqrib uh, يعني so so that oh you know we have uh, fruits that come down to you and yes you say they say there are birds the size of the camel sometimes flying you don't even have to ask if you just think you would like to have some uh, bird meat bird f- comes down cooked <laughs> roasted <laughs> ready for you to eat <laughs> It's heavens beyond understanding. It is Allah's fadl. So He, who is hosting, who is hosting the believers in heavens? Allah, according to His generosity. So you have to, we have to understand. So Yawm al Akhir, Judgment Day, must believe. So the author says of the the Qasida, قال الناظم رحمه الله. إيماننا بيوم آخر وجب وكل ما كان به من العجب. Our belief in the judgment day, the final day, يوم الآخر. وجب obligatory as a Muslim, you must believe in judgment day. وكل ما كان به من العجب and everything that your mind is astonished with. Whatever it is that your mind is shocked, surprised, you have to believe because it is coming from Al Masduq, Sadiq Al Masduq, from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the truthful one. Never in his existence he told a lie. So he is telling you what is going to happen, and you must believe in this. So the Sayyidina Shaykh Muhammad Al Malik is saying, Yajibu ala kulli mukallafin. أي يصدق باليوم الآخر everyone as we said must believe Allah says in the Holy Quran قال تعالى ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر the righteousness is to believe in Allah and judgment day and the final day وبما اشتمل عليه من ذلك ما يري and everything that that day Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم informed us about that day what will what that day what it what آخرة means what that realm, what is in that realm, a prophet informed us about, you must believe in. And he starts with Al Barzakh. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Barzakh is when we leave this dunya before Allah gathers creation, before Ba'ath, in the grave, it is called the Barzakh. A Barzakh is um, a barrier. That barzakh is said is 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 much bigger than this dunya, but it is a place where once crossed, then that there's no return to dunya in physicality. خلاص. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala may give to His prophets or His awliya the ability with their spiritual power to move wherever they like. That's His program. But for the majority of people, that's it. They're they're in that world until. The uh, judgment day. وَهُوَ مَا بَيْنَ الْمَوْتِ وَيَوْمَ الْبَعْثِ It is the realm between death and between resurrection and mushur. It's called al-barzakh. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Behind them, once they cross, behind them is a barzakh, is a, is a barrier until judgment day. They cannot come back. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى سؤال, uh, Second thing is سؤال القبر Nowadays there's amongst Muslim people who say that there is no punishment of the grave yeah, it's, they come. But it is 
one of the matters that every uh, responsible Muslim must believe. So, al qabr wa na'imu li ahli ta'ati wa adabu li ahli ma'asiyah. Grave and it is delights for the people of obedience and it is punishment for the people of disobedience. You must believe in that. And what what is the thing? وَمِمَّا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ لِأَهْلِ الْمَعْصِيَةِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَىٰ What is the dalil, the proof that the, there is uh, there is uh, punishment in the grave? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says وَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ النَّارُ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا غُدُوًّا وَعَشِيًّا وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ Allah speaks about the the qaum of Sayyidina of the not Sayyidina astaghfirullah the qaum of Fir'aun alayhi ma yastahiq Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam we say Sayyidina anbiya are asyad but not those ones that the people of Pharaoh uh, Allah says about them an nar the fire yu'radun alayha means the fire will be displayed for them morning and evening so they have a they have a what do you say a window every morning and evening while they're in their barzakh in their grave they are shown their seats in the hellfire and they're shown what is coming it's not fire they're not in the fire yu'aradun means it is displayed for them this is one of the proofs that in the grave as prophet sallallahu informed us when the person dies, the angels will show him his seat in heaven. If he's from the people of hell, they will show him his seat in heaven. And they say, you could, this is what you could have gone, but since you messed up, this is where you will end up. And for the believer, they will show him his seat in, in uh, hell. And they say, because of your obedience, you have saved yourself from this, and they will show him his seat in heaven. And this is from the Sunnah. So this must be belief, uh, belief in in the grave, in its delights and its punishments. This is the realm. And the, from uh, the other aspects of Judgment Day is al ba'athu min al qubur, resurrection. Every Muslim must believe in resurrection. That one day, when قَالَ تَعَالَى سَعِدْ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ تُبْعَثُونَ On Judgment Day you will be resurrected in Surah Al-Mu'minun وَقَالَ تَعَالَى اللَّهُ يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts creation then he will يُعِيدُهُ means bring it back again ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ means he'll create you then he will resurrect you again second round ثم إليه ترجعون وقال تعالى واستعيد بلا وما خلقكم ولا بعثكم إلا كنفس واحدة Your creation and your resurrection is as if Allah. for Allah it's like creating one creating one is like creating all it's all the same for him and then we have the fourth aspect of اليوم الآخر is حشر الأشساد إلى الموقف is the gathering of the gathering of uh, human beings Ashad means they're in their forms, the gathering uh, for Yawm al Mahshar. Yuhsharu al Nas, Kala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yuhsharu al Nas, Yawm al Qiyamati, Hufatun, Uratun, Gurala, Kama, Huliku. Prophet sallallahu said that on Judgment Day, the people will be resurrected, barefooted, naked, as if they're the way they were born when the first time. When their mother brought them, brought them forth. كما خلق. وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إنكم لا محشورون رجالا وركبانا وتجرون على وجوهكم. He said, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that you will be resurrected, walking, riding, and even even walking. Some will be walking on their faces. Those may Allah save us. Allah ma'afia. وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أول من يكسى يوم القيامة خليل الله عليه السلام قبطيتين ثم يكسى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم حلة حمراء عن يمين العرش Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم also said that the first, the first of the who will be dressed with 
two beautiful garments qutiyatain means similar to the um, the cloth that used to come from Egypt ثم يكسى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم حلة حبرة عن يمين العرش then Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم will be uh, dressed with another uh, garment and the author that mentions that Al-Hafidh uh, said that the fact that Sayyidina Ibrahim will the Prophet mentioned that he will be dressed first does not constitute that the Prophet is not the Imam and the Sayyid of all Prophets and yakuna afdala min nabiyin alayhi salam so mutlaqan that maybe Sayyidina uh, for example Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam when everybody is resurrected Prophet وسلم, when he he will find uh, Sayyidina Musa holding to the pillars of the pillar of the uh, throne uh, that does not mean that Sayyidina Musa also is in his afdaliya except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have granted one of the prophets one of the honors to be to be first but mutlaqan in a general term our prophet sallallahu is the master of all creation salawat wa rabbi wa salamu alayhi And then the fifth thing that all Muslims must believe is that the intercession, Shafa'a. Prophet ﷺ is Shafi'ul A'zam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may grant Shafa'a to whom he likes. We all know that Hafiz al Quran will uh, will be granted Shafa'a in in uh, his family. And uh, I, I'm not sure the figure, exact figure. Uh, Forty of his uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. But that's for a Hafiz. What about a Prophet? What about Awliya? What about Prophets? What about Messengers? That they've been granted Shafa'a. So Allah may uh, grant Shafa'a to whom He like. And it is said that Al-Maqam Al-Mahmud, the, grand, the, the praiseworthy station of Prophets, is, is that Maqam. Is he is Maqam Al-Shafa'a al uzma when all of creation will be lined up seeking to uh, someone to intercede on their behalf. And no one will dare to intercede except Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is a Shafa'a al uzma No one. And imagine all the trouble that the Ummah of Habib is saved on that day. We, we don't have to go anywhere. We're, we're, everybody's running here and there to say that. <laughs> we are Ummah al-Habib. He informed, we know he is a Shafi'u al azam We're not going anywhere. We're sitting here until our Prophet <laughs> Until we're not running anywhere at that time. So Shafa'a al uzma is Shafa'atu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fi fasli al-qadai l-irahati al-khalqi min hawli al-mawqif. This is when we're just waiting to be judged. People are just waiting to be judged. And the, the difficulty of that day and the pain for some of that day is so much that people will go to... They say, we don't care if we end up in hell. That's how painful that, that day and that wait is. Just judge us. You know, that's how, how difficult that day is. And this is the day when Prophet Sallallahu when everyone runs to him, and he says, Ana laha, ana laha, salawatu rabbi wa salamu I am for this, I, this is my station, this is my, my place. And only him, Salawat Rabbi Muhammad, are on that day. No Nabi, no angel, no Uli uh, Al-Azm, Anbiya, Sayyidina Ibrahim, everyone was saying Nafsi, Nafsi on that day. They will feel such a uh, manifestation of, because they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some narrations is, is uh, angry in such a way he's never been angry before. His ghadab will manifest, his anger will manifest in such a way that all the prophets will not will not dare to to stand and ask. Only one. That's your Nabi. Nobody else can 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 do that on that day. So that is the Shafa'a al Uzma is for Prophet alone. Shafa'atu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fi Ithali Qawm al Jannah. 
also shafa'a when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi after Allah judges people, some enter heaven, hell, some enter heaven, he will intercede for some people who are already destined for hell, been judged for hell, and take them out. This is another shafa'a. And Imam Nawawi said, this is also for Prophet alone. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fi idkhali qawmin al-jannah. And thalitha shafa'atahu fi ziyadati al-darajat. Now you enter heaven, but we may be in uh, the yani, lowest level. So he may intercede for some to bring them up. He may be like, oh, you're here. I don't know. Take him. He will intercede for some to raise their stations inside heaven. And uh, Imam Nawawi said that it's most likely that it is his specialty as well. But he says Jawas, it's not for he's not certain of it. Shafa'a fi man istahaqqa dukhul al-nar alla yadkhulaha. And then the fourth one is for those who deserve to enter hell, but the Prophet said they will never enter. It's not they will enter and he will take them out, but th because he intercedes, they will never be sent. Salawat wa rabbi wa salam wa alayhi. قال قاضى عياد وليست مختصة به صلى الله عليه وسلم قاضى عياد said this is not only for prophet Allah gives it this شفاعة to other uh, servants then وتردد النووي أي لأن النووي was not certain either way because there is no صريح no تصريح بذلك there is no clear evidence of this and the fifth one is شفاعة في إخراج قوم من النار the shafa'a to take some people out of hellfire after they've been sent there. And this, yushariku fiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this, uh, this shafa'a, anbiya may, may be granted this, and uh, righteous believers may be even granted this. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yashfa'u yawm al-qiyamati thalath al-anbiya thumma al-ulama thumma al-shuhada. Salawatu rabbi wa sallam alayhi said, three types of people will make shafa'a on judgment day. Prophets, Ulama and Shuhada. And then the sixth one is Al Hisabu Wal Qisas, and we will stop here, inshaAllah. Is Hisab and Qisas is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge everyone for their deeds. Everyone will come with their book of deeds. And there's no denying on that day your own. Your own organs will testify on you. You will, you cannot, you cannot deny standing in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You will see your book of deeds. Ya laytani mitu qabla hada in Surah Al-Ma. Some will say, "Oh, I, I wish I disappear. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I cease to exist. I have no." When they see that, and we'll talk about that, inshallah, in the next session, al hisabu wal qisas is the sixth uh, the sixth uh, matter in that that we must believe in in regarding al yawm al akhir wa min allah tawfiq may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, to real certainty of faith and real belief inshallah so that we may we may not just yani we may not just do people of just saying, but people of actually acting upon their beliefs, uh, that we 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 take we take our religion seriously, especially in this world we live in. Now. We have to struggle. We have to fight. We have to fight to stay on the straight path. And uh, inshallah, with the help of our teachers, Mashaykh, Allah Taufiq, Bi Hurmat Al Habib, Bi Hurmat Al Fatiha.